Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Techno Engineer. I am Dr. Muhammad Yaqub. In this lecture, I will discuss the basic concept of concentrated solar power technologies. As you know that solar is an extraordinary source which is available as a source of energy and from this source we can produce heat and electricity. There are three different ways to produce the heat and electricity from the solar. One is concentrated solar power. The second one is photovoltaic systems. And the third one is uh, photovoltaic and temperature, which is known as PVT technologies. In this lecture, I will be focusing on concentrated solar power. And in next few lecture, I will focus on PV and PVT technologies. So what is concentrated solar power? So con con concentrated solar power is basically a distributed generation uh, technique. And uh, it is a technology by which we concentrate the solar light into a single point and from that single point we produce heat and from that heat we can produce electricity. So there are two ways to use this concentrated solar power. One is to produce heat and uh, from heat we can warm up the uh, water and for we use the concentrated solar power for uh, water geyser application. The second one is to uh, we concentrate uh, a heat and we make steam and from steam we can produce electricity. Uh, so these are the some statistics. If you these are from 2009 to 2019, and this is the growth of concentrated solar power. Up till now, almost 6.2 gigawatt uh, thermal power is generated from concentrated solar power. So the major chunk is from the Spain, and the second one is United States, who are working on concentrated solar power. However, the rest of the world uh, is producing very lesser amount of uh, electricity or energy from concentrated solar power. If you see uh, electricity generation, then you will understand that almost 21.2% uh, 21.2 gigawatt hour of electricity is generated from concentrated solar power. And from uh, solar thermal heat or water heating, the energy which is used, which is approximately equal to 479 gigawatt of thermal energy uh, up till 2019. And uh, from solar water heating collector, uh, China is on the top, which is producing almost 24 gigawatt of thermal uh, energy from uh, for for uh, for the solar water heating collectors specifically solar geysers other than china turkey india brazil united states australia germany and then so on so uh, the major chunk is produced by china and if you uh, see the solar district heating systems which are installed so these are the number which are installed in uh, in the whole world and the, the orange part shows uh, the uh, solar uh, water heating system uh, installed in Europe and the yellow part in the remaining world. So these are, uh, if you see the statistics, then the major uh, chunk is from uh, the major country which are using solar heating process is the Denmark. Almost its capacity is doubled in 2016. So if we compare uh, the uh, country by its percentage in percentage, then 71% of water heating is used by China and the remaining uh, rest of the world is using 10% and uh, other countries like India, Australia, Austria, Israel, Greece are using very lesser amount of so this is the main mechanism of uh, solar water geyser. This is the line of uh, cold water. This cold water moves from here to these ducts and from these ducts uh, there is a solar collector and these ducts collect the solar heat and the water uh, become hot and this hot water will enter into the, this tank and uh, this tank is basically uh, 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 this tank is become uh, extremely hot and it will produce 
uh, it will warm up the water normally a water geyser can maintain its temperature up till 40 to 45 degree for almost 8 to 10 days so the uh, water geyser is a very good component uh, uh, and very useful component for the countries where sunlight is available and uh, yeah, we can use this sunlight for water heating purpose so for electricity there are four basic methodologies number one is parabolic dishes number two is parabolic trough number three is solar power tower and number four is uh, linear uh, fre fre fresnel so there are four different ways uh, to use uh, solar heat and to use that heat for to for produce electricity but uh, there are three successful demonstration or approaches which are used to produce electricity one is uh, parabolic dish system with uh, sterling engine second one is linear solar trough system and uh, the third one is heliostate or uh, mirrors reflecting sunlight up to a power tower so these three techniques are used to produce uh, electricity from the solar concentrated power so uh, for the solar dishes or for the stunning power system dishes or stunning power system use a concentrator made up of multiple meters that are approximately a parabolic dishes uh, the dish track the sun and focus it onto a thermal receiver the thermal receiver absorb the solar energy and convert into heat that is delivered to the sterling engine the receiver can be made up of bank of tube container a uh, heat transfer medium usually helium or hydrogen which also served as a working fluid for the engine another approach is based on the heating pipe in which the uh, boiling and condensing of an intermediate fluid is used to transfer heat from the receiver to the stirling engine the cold side of the stirling engine is maintained using water cooled fan augmented radiator system similar to the ordinary automobiles so here is the basic demonstration of stirling engine uh, when heat is applied when heat is applied it will expand and when it expand it start moving a uh, start rotating and producing uh, uh, mechanical motion and that mechanical motion will be converted into electricity so the second way is solar dishes or stirling engine two competing dish Stirling engine, uh, Stirling system technologies has been successfully demonstrated. In one, the dish is built by Science Application International Corporation, that is SIAC, and the engine by Stirling Thermal Motors. So the other is Boeing Stirling in uh, Energy System (SES) power plant. Both provide on the order of 25 kilowatt per system with the conversion efficiency from direct beam solar radiation to electric power is approximately equal to 20 percent so there are two systems one is SEAC SAIC and the second one is SES both system are successfully working if you see the statistics of SEAC then the uh, in the SEAC the dishes itself is made up of array of 16 uh, stretched membrane mirrored uh, mirror facets each facet consists of steel rings approximately 3.2 uh, meter in diameter with thin stainless membrane uh, stretch over both sides of the ring to form a structure that resemble a drum the top re uh, membrane is made highly reflective by limiting either a thin glass mirror or silverized polymer reflective film onto the membrane the shape of the mirrored surface can be made slightly concave along each fact to be focused on approximately up to the receiver the sunlight concentrated by the citra disease is uh, absorbed in the receiver to provide 725 degree centigrade heat to the sterling engine so this is the basic block diagram basic structure of the 
uh, SEAC system. So you 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 see that uh, these are the tracking mirrors, and uh, this is the mirror facets, and then uh, there is a control mechanism or actuators which are used to control the uh, direction of the string according to the direction of the sun, and uh, this is the power outline. These are the uh, uh, auxiliary fuel, and then uh, this these this is the receiver. Where the con then where the sunlight is concentrated on this point, and from this receiver the heat is then transferred to produce electricity. The second uh, type is STM uh, Stirling engine. The STM engine is made up of four cylinders, each with a double acting piston arranged in a square pattern. The connecting rods for the piston cause a, 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 a swash plate. To convert their motion to a rotatory motion needed by the generator. The efficiency of this engine is approximately equal to 36%. So this is the basic formation of STM selling engine. So if you see that the sunlight concentrate on this area, and from this area there is an aperture and uh, sunlight is concentrated, and this concentrated sunlight will put will be uh, there is an aux uh, auxiliary fuel combustion which uh, which start heating and this heat will uh, help the starting engine to move and the generator will be uh, and uh, generator will move and produce electricity while the fan uh, this fan is basically a cooling fan for the exhaust purpose so uh, they if you see uh, uh, then these are the uh, uh, efficiency of SEAC or STM dishes. So the so solar insulation uh, step uh, efficiency is 100%. Similarly, the reflecting by mirror is 93%. Intercept at aperture is 90%. Absorbed by the receiver is 85%. Receiver heat loss 98%. Engine mechanical efficiency 36.1%. Gear box efficiency 98%. Gross uh, generator output 92%. So these are the some efficiencies of uh, the parts of uh, solar uh, CSP generator. The third most important type is parabolic trough. The world largest solar power plant is 354 megawatt power parab parabolic trough located in uh, in California. SCG consists of nine large array made up of uh, a row of parabolic shaped mirror that reflect and concentrate the sunlight onto the linear uh, receiver located along with the most view parabola. The receiver or the heat collector element consists of a stainless steel absorber tube surrounded by a glass enveloped with a vacuum drawn between the two or to reduce the heat loss. The heat transfer fluid circulates through the receiver to deliver the collected solar energy to somewhat conventional stem uh, turbine generator to produce electricity. So this is the basic uh, structure of the parabolic trough. There are a huge number of parabolic trough connected in kind of series and there is a pipe where, where the sunlight is concentrated and the, the, at this pipe the heat uh, will be absorbed and then to transfer to the collector. So this is the basic phenomena. This is the parabolic uh, trough and uh, all the light is concentrated on a single point where the rod is connected. So, uh, in, if you see, then there, there, there is a heat transfer fluid in this road, and when they, it receives the heat, uh, the fluid start moving and transfer it to uh, transfer to produce steam to for the Stirling engine. So this is the whole mechanism. There are multiple parabolic troughs, and uh, then uh, the uh, combined heat is collected to the hot tank, and then the reactor uh, for the boiler. And the boiler will uh, force the turbine to move, and the turbine will produce electric, uh, electricity. And then uh, the, uh, there is a mechanism where the water is pumped again uh, into the cool tank, and then cool tank will follow the same process. So this is the gradual development of the SEG uh, S, uh, and uh, almost SEG nine is being launched, and the, this is the installed capacity of SEG nine. 
the another type of uh, uh, solar uh, concentrated power is a solar central receiver system this is basically a tower based system where the central receiver is on the top of the tower and different mirrors are used uh, and these mirrors can uh, uh, adjust their position in order to concentrate the light at the top of the tower to produce heat and electricity so the evaluation of the power tower began in 1976 with the establishment of the national solar thermal test facility at sandia national laboratory Uh, in mexico the soon led to con, uh, to the constant uh, constructor of number of test facility around the world the largest of which is 90 uh, meter tall and almost 10 megawatt and 10 megawatt power tower called solar 1 and solar 2 built near the california so this is the complete phenomena there are heliostats they are specifically mirrors and their angle is automatically controlled and this angle will concentrate the sunlight at the top of the tower at the top of the tower there are special pipes where the fluid uh, moves and then the, these fluid will uh, store the heat at the tank and from the tank the turbine will move and the turbine will produce heat and electricity turbine will produce electricity to the generator to the power system so there are some countries which are using the, this kind of thing if you see the greece greece has a power plant which is producing 50 megawatt and other power plants are very small then we have usa usa is producing uh, usa have multiple power plants uh, and they are producing 10 megawatt 5 megawatt etc so uh, the major comparison with uh, regard to the efficiency all three of these technologies incorporate engine which means the higher the temperature of the heating source the greater the potential efficiency the key to high temperature is the uh, intensity of the solar radiation focus up to uh, the receiver which is usually expressed in dimensional Uh, dimensionless sun of the concentration where the reference point of one sun means no concentration distilling system achieve concentrated ratio of about 3000 suns uh, power tower about uh, 1000 suns and parabolic trough almost 100 suns no surprisingly the con- uh, cro- uh, corresponding efficiency of these technologies follow to some rank with the dishes uh, st- stalling the highest and the parabolic trough the lowest there are a number of measures of efficiency including peak efficiency under design technologies uh, condition annual efficiency as measured in the field and land area requirement per unit so the current uh, annual efficiency from the sunlight heating collector to electrical energy delivered to the grid for the system is approximately distilling is almost 21% power tower is 16% and parabolic trough is 14% so in terms of area the power tower suffer because of empty space between the tower and the mirror so the ranking shift will be this tailing require almost 4 acre per megawatt parabolic trough require 5 acre per megawatt and power tower required 8 acre per megawatt so another important uh, concern for solar system is generally is whether they can be deliver electricity whenever it is needed so if there is a sunny day then there is a chance to produce electricity otherwise if there there is a cloudy day then the chances to produce electricity is very low so when the thermal storage is backup rather than fuel combustion systems are easier to permit since they can produce they can be 100% solar based thank you jazakallah hopefully you uh, you under the, understand the basic concept of concentrated solar power if you have any query or comments please write in the comment section stay blessed allah hafiz